Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into unlimited tower defense, and let's be real, the pull rates in this game? Absolutely brutal. We've all been there, rolling 150 times just to snag that one elusive mythic unit. It's a pain we've all felt. So, whether you're hoarding gems or wondering if you should keep trying your luck, I've got you covered. In this video, we're going over the definitive tier list of all units in UTD. I'm here to help you spend those hard-earned summons wisely. Stick around as we break down which units are worth your time and which ones will leave you cursing the RNG gods. Let's jump in and make sure your next pool session is a win. I'm quickly moving on to the video and I'm ranking units in unlimited tower defense. Before we start, if you enjoy these types of tier list videos, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Enjoy watching. A very small portion of the audience is subscribed to the channel. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like these types of videos. Thanks. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Yuso, Lightspeed, Blademaster, and Gale. Alright, let's dive into the E-tier units of Unlimited Tower Defense. These are the guys you bring in when, well, you really shouldn't be bringing them in, unless you're totally out of options. First up, we've got Yuso. Now, Yuso isn't completely terrible. He's just kind of terrible. He's got some okay-ish stats, but that's about it. If you squint, you can see he's a tiny step up from Blademaster. But honestly, if Yuso is your strongest unit, things aren't looking good for you. Speaking of Blademaster, let's talk about this guy. You'd think with a name like Blademaster, he'd be slicing through enemies left and right, right? Nope. He's got the lowest DPS in the entire game. It's like he's bringing a butter knife to a sword fight. Seriously. You only use this guy if your team is so bad that even a houseplant could make a difference. Trust me, Blademaster's DPS is a tragedy in itself. And then there's Lightspeed. Don't let the name fool you, there's nothing speedy about this unit except for how quickly you'll regret placing him down. Sure, he's cheap to deploy, but that's like saying a paper straw is cheap. It's not about the cost, it's about how useless it is. His only real talent is making you feel bad about your tower choices. So yeah, these E-tier units? They're the ones you avoid unless you're in real trouble. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Buddha, Stretchy, Electro Slash, Annie, and Lightning Wielder. Alright, so let's talk about some D-tier units in unlimited tower defense. These guys are, let's just say, not exactly the heroes of the battlefield. But hey, they still deserve a bit of attention, right? Let's start with Buddha. Now, Buddha's range? Pretty solid, no complaints there. But the problem, his damage output is just, oof, it's like he's meditating through the fight, you know? Great for inner peace, not so great for taking down hordes of enemies. Next up, we've got Stretchy. Now, Stretchy is a bit of an interesting case. His range and damage are pretty low, like, we're talking about barely making a dent kind of low. But hold on, he's got this crazy fast seconds per attack, so he's just out there swinging non-stop. He's also got an evolution, Stretchy Orc, that you'll need for one of the portals, so maybe don't sleep on this guy just yet. Now, Electro Slash is where it gets kind of fun. She's actually amazing early game. Cheap to upgrade, full AoE, and when she's maxed out, her DPS is pretty solid. The catch? Yeah, she's only really good for the story mode. After that, it's like, thanks for the memories, but we're moving on. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Swordmaster, Dragon Slayer, Shadow Bolt, Veggie, and Celestial Waterbearer. Let's talk about some of the C tier units in Unlimited Tower Defense. Now, don't get me wrong, these units aren't terrible, but they're definitely not the heavy hitters you'd want to rely on in those late game waves. First up, we've got Swordmaster Aster. He's got pretty decent range, respectable damage, and a nice seconds per attack. But when you compare him to the other legendary units out there, he's just okay. You'll be tempted to use him, but as soon as you test out other units, you'll quickly realize there are better options for your hard-earned coins. Next up, the infamous Dragon Slayer. You'd think a guy called Dragon Slayer would be an absolute beast on the field, right? Well, not exactly. Sure, he has 9 upgrades, which sounds super promising at first, but by the time you've invested all your money in maxing him out, the end result is kind of underwhelming. His upgrades are so expensive, and the payoff just doesn't justify the cost. He's one of those units that looks cool on paper, but ends up being bait for newer players. Trust me, you're better off using those resources elsewhere. Now, Shadow Bolt is a bit more useful, especially as a starter unit. His long range line area of effect attack and low SPA when fully upgraded make him a solid pick early on. 
He can help you manage those initial waves without breaking the bank. He's not going to carry you through the whole game, but for those first few rounds, he'll hold his own. Just be ready to swap him out later because he's not going to stand up to those bigger threats in the higher waves. Finally, we've got Veggie and Celestial Water Bearer. Now, Veggie is one of those units that you don't really notice until you fully upgrade him. Up until then, you might even forget he's on the map, but once he's maxed out, he's a decent contributor to your team. Meanwhile, Celestial Waterbearer has this crazy wide line attack and decent damage when maxed, but her placement cost and upgrades are so expensive, she's only really viable for infinite mode. She's one of those units you bring out when you've got money to burn and need to fill up space, but don't count on her carrying your entire strategy. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Tidal Empress, Chi Master, Stretchy Sailor, Curse Face, Serpent Fang, and Ice Bender. All right, let's talk about some B-tier units in unlimited tower defense. Now, don't sleep on these. B-tier doesn't mean bad. These units can still get the job done, especially when you know how to play to their strengths. So, let's dive in. First up, we have Tidal Empress. She's a full AoE hybrid unit, and while her DPS is only moderate, her huge AoE radius more than makes up for it. Honestly, she's great for clearing out crowds. You just gotta know how to position her right, and she'll wash away those enemies like a tidal wave, pun intended. Plus, who doesn't love an Empress? Then there's Chi Master. Now Chi Master is one of those units that makes you scratch your head a little. Fully upgraded, this guy is an absolute beast. But, and this is a big but, his placement can be a pain. His attack is super inconsistent because it's bugged, which can get pretty frustrating. For infinite mode though, he could easily bump up to A tier, so if you're willing to roll the dice, he's still worth considering. Now, Stretchy Sailor, this guy's fun. He's got a long line AoE when maxed out and some pretty solid stats overall. But the trade-off? A super high SPA. You'll be waiting around a lot between attacks, which can feel a bit slow, especially when things get hectic. Still, if you need some steady long-range damage, he's your guy. Just be patient. Lastly, we've got Ice Bender. This one's cool, literally. She slows down enemies and has pretty solid DPS for a rare unit. That slow effect can be a game changer when you're trying to keep the baddies at bay, letting your other units pile on the damage. Honestly, Icebender can be a sneaky good addition to your lineup if you know how to use her right. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Skyflame, Ocean Sentinel, Stretchy Orc, Shinobi, Tengan, Battle Frenzy, and Tide Warrior. Alright, let's talk about some of the A-tier units in Unlimited Tower Defense, starting with Skyflame. Now, I get it. Non-evolved Skyflame might not seem super impressive at first. It's definitely not what you call game-changing, but here's the kicker. You need him. The guy's evolution is absolutely top tier, so even if you're not blown away in the early stages, trust me, he's worth the investment. Moving on to Ocean Sentinel. Okay, this one's kinda weird. He's a mythic, right? So, you'd expect something insane, but Ocean Sentinel has a short range, and his small AoE doesn't help much either. His SPA? Not great. But on the plus side, he has solid base damage and can target both ground and air, which makes him useful in certain situations. So, while he's not blowing anyone away, he's still a decent pick if you know how to work around those shortcomings. Now, Stretchy Orc is a real mix of good and A. This guy has one of the longest ranges in the game, which sounds amazing at first glance. But the issue is, even with that impressive reach, his DPS just isn't there. You'll see those enemies coming from miles away, but taking them down? A little slower than you'd like. He's great for maps where you need to cover a lot of ground, but don't expect him to carry your team with raw damage alone. And then there's Shinobi, who is the legendary unit to have right now. I mean, talk about low SPA, high range, and awesome base damage. Shinobi is just one of those units that does everything well, making him a go-to for a lot of players. Plus, his evolutions? Absolute must-haves if you want to take your game to the next level. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Psychowave Evo, Skyflame Evo, Cursed King, Moonslayer, Psychowave, Shinobi Four Tails, Berserker, Crimson Fist, Aqua Hollow, and Tidal Predator. Alright, let's dive into the top S tier units in Unlimited Tower Defense, because let's be real, we all want to dominate those maps with the best of the best, right? Let's kick things off with Psychowave Evo, which is kind of a love-hate situation. Sure, he's got insane DPS and range, but that AoE attack? It's just so tiny. Like, come on, for an evolution, we expected more. 
Sometimes you might actually be better off with the regular version depending on the scenario. It's almost like they took a step backward with this one, and honestly, it leaves you wondering if that Evo was even worth the grind. Next up is Sky Flame Evo, and this one is a showstopper. When you max this bad boy out, he's firing off a huge line AoE attack that stays on the battlefield for several seconds. It's like a light show of destruction, continuously damaging anything that dares to cross it. If you're looking for a unit that doesn't just hit hard but keeps hitting, Skyflame Evo's got you covered. Perfect for those long maps where you just need to clear wave after wave without worrying about missing a beat. Now, Cursed King, this unit is Chef's Kiss. Fully upgraded, he's rocking a full AoE with bleeding damage, plus his range and overall damage are top tier. I will say his SPA is a bit long, but he makes up for it with his skill, which channels damage over several seconds. It's almost like he's telling the enemies, I may take my time, but when I hit, I hit hard. It's hard not to love a unit that can wipe out enemies and leave them bleeding all over the map. Speaking of quick hitters, Moonslayer comes in with one of the lowest SPAs in the game, which is awesome. His base damage and range are solid too, so he's definitely not one to sleep on. However, that line AoE does limit him a bit. You know, in some maps you just need that full AoE spread to cover everything, and Moonslayer's lack of that makes him fall just a bit behind the top dogs in the mythic category. Still, if you're all about speed, he's definitely worth a spot in your lineup. And finally, let's talk about Tidal Predator. This new legendary unit is an absolute beast. He's got a big cone AoE with super high damage and a low cooldown. Like I'm talking rivaling mythic level DPS. It's wild to think that a legendary unit is pulling these kinds of numbers, but here we are. He's definitely shaking up the meta, and if you haven't gotten him yet, trust me, you'll want to. He's an absolute must-have for anyone looking to breeze through those tougher maps. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Ant King, Red Knight, Shinobi, Six Tails, Quake Emperor, Cursed King Evo, Crimson Fist Evo, Moonslayer Evo, Berserker Evo, and Forest Keeper. Alright, let's dive right into some of the absolute best units in Unlimited Tower Defense, we're talking S plus tier powerhouses here. If you're serious about dominating the game, these are the units you'll want to keep your eye on. First up, we've got the Ant King, and let me tell you, this guy doesn't mess around. Sure, some of his stats might not be the highest, but that raw damage, oof, it's the best of the best. His performance in battle speaks for itself, and if you're looking for a secret unit that packs a punch, Ant King is a must have. Next, we've got the Red Knight. Now, Red Knight is all about that full AoE action. You love to see it. He's got solid all-around stats, making him a really well-rounded unit. Yeah, his range is a little shorter compared to Shinobi Six Tails, but the sheer power he brings with that AoE more than makes up for it. Speaking of Six Tails, when this bad boy is fully upgraded, he's also full AoE and deals some of the best damage in the game right now. Excellent range, superb damage, and a speedy seconds per attack. Shinobi Six Tails is easily one of the most reliable secrets in UTD. Now, let's talk about the Quake Emperor. If you want a unit that's going to hit hard from far away, this is your guy. Quake Emperor is a hybrid unit, which means he can attack both ground and air enemies, and when fully upgraded, he's full AoE too. That long range makes him perfect for staying back while dishing out massive damage. Honestly, any team not using Quake Emperor is missing out big time. Trust me, he's essential for any squad looking to go the distance. Alright, let's move on to the evolved units, starting with Cursed King Evo. This mythic unit is something else, he's full AoE, he's got bleed, and his damage is just ridiculous. His range is huge too, but don't let his slower SPA fool you, his shrine channels for most of it, meaning he's still pumping out damage while you wait. Oh, and speaking of evolutions, we can't forget about Crimson Fist Evo. His AoE is even wider than before, and he hits like a truck. The long attack channeling makes his high SPA barely noticeable, so it's like he's always on the move. Finally, let's give a shout out to the Forest Keeper. Now, she's the only farm unit in the game, and let's be real, she's a must have in your squad for anything outside of infinite mode. Infinite mode gives you tons of cash, but for everything else, Forest Keeper is the backbone of your economy. If you don't have her, you're going to be struggling to keep those upgrades rolling in later waves, so yeah, she's definitely top tier for anyone looking to maximize their unit potential. There you go. These S plus tier units will carry you through the toughest waves in UTD. The video ends here. See you in another video. Don't forget to subscribe.